Hi there, folks. In this little section, we're going to talk about inertia, mass, and weight. So let's begin by talking about inertia. Definition of inertia, and definitely copy this down. You need to know this. And remember, if I go too fast ever, hit pause so you can write down what you need to. The definition of inertia is the tendency of an object to keep doing what it is already doing. You may have heard this statement, an object at rest tends to remain at rest, and an object in motion tends to remain in motion. But I prefer this definition of inertia. What this basically says, an object likes to keep doing what it's already doing, is if you have an object in motion, it wants to stay in motion. For example, this poor fellow um, hit these tires with his motorcycle, and since there's not seat belts on a motorcycle, when the bike stopped, his body was still going forward at the same speed that the bicycle, excuse me, motorcycle was going. And so he ends up flying through the air. That is a beautiful example of inertia. What keeps the Earth actually moving around the sun um, in orbit? If it's just the force of gravity, the force of gravity, the Earth would go boom, and it would fall right into the sun. But we don't fall into the sun. We actually orbit around the sun. What keeps us in orbit? Well, there's thing, a thing called rotational inertia. And the fact that long ago, far away, when the solar system was formed, there was rotational motion to all of the dust and debris that actually ended up making up all of the various planets in our solar system. And it is the inertia from those that original rotation that keeps us orbiting the sun today. It is plain old ordinary inertia that keeps us going around in a big ellipse. Another classic example of inertia is an object at rest tends to remain at rest. You may have seen the classic pull the tablecloth out from underneath the dishes trick. And if you do this quickly enough, the, the glass, the silverware, the dishes all stay put because of inertia. They have a tendency to not want to move, not want to accelerate. And inertia is going to pop up in lots of things throughout this course as we try and explain. Now, mass is the amount of matter within an object. It has to do with the atoms. Um, if the atoms are tightly bound together and they're very, very dense, you can have something like lead. If you end up with something that is the atoms are, are more fluffy, if you want to say that, um, you can th have things that are low density, like helium. But mass is always measured in kilograms, and that's the metric unit. The English unit for mass is the slug. And I've tried to do some reading about where the origin of the slug comes from. Um, there are a variety of different hypotheses, because nobody's really sure. Nobody wrote it down at the time. But hundreds of years ago, it was believed that people were trying to weigh one object compared to another. And a slug was a small cannonball. Um, and if they put an object on one side and they put one of these small cannonballs on the other side, um, it would have a mass of one slug. Now, what gizmo or tool do you use to measure mass? It is a balance. It is always a comparison of a known to an unknown. This gives you kind of a physical picture of about how big a slug is compared to a kilogram. It's a much larger unit. Most of the time, we're going to stick to kilograms, but it's kind of fun to know what a slug is. And later in the course, I'm going to have you calculate your mass in slugs just for giggles. Mass is also a measure of how much inertia an object has. If something has a lot of mass, like this car has a lot of mass, it is hard to start it moving. We've got one, two, three, four big adult humans. Oh, maybe that's five big adult humans. And they are trying to push this car, and it's very, very difficult. It's very, very heavy. It has a lot of mass, and it takes a lot of energy or force to make that move. Now, here is a cute little child who is pushing a little doll stroller, and she's not terribly strong, and the stroller has a very, very small mass, and so it does not take a big force to make this thing move. 
Inertia also is an indicator of how hard it is to stop an object moving. Um, if I have a small child that's playing softball and this young fellow is catching this ball, he can do that. That's not huge job because of the fact that this is a small mass. Now, this guy is throwing a rock. I don't know why he's throwing this big boulder, but he is. Can you imagine trying to catch that? You would need a huge force because of the fact that that has a very, very large mass. Now, weight is not the same as mass. And in physics, it's very important that you understand the difference. Weight is defined as the force of gravity on an object. So weight totally depends on how much gravity there is in a spot or an area. The tool that's used is a spring scale. In physics labs, we typically use a spring scale like this to find the force of gravity on, ob on objects or to measure other forces. The English unit of weight is the pound, same pound that we have on our bathroom scale, or the metric units are newtons. These are force units, and weight is actually a force. It just happens to be the force caused by gravity. Now, mass and weight are not the same, and it's real important that you understand this. Mass is the same everywhere it's measured. So here's someone who has a mass of 56 kilograms, and her mass is 56 kilograms on the Earth. Her mass is going to be 56 kilograms on the Moon. Heck, her mass would be 56 kilograms if she was standing on sweet little planetoid Pluto out there. She'd have exactly the same mass. But weight is dependent upon gravity. The Earth's gravity is much bigger than Moon's gravity, so weight is going to change whenever you just move from one place to another. If you want to calculate your lunar weight, if anybody is ever so brash as to ask you how much you weigh, I usually just tell them how much I weigh on the Moon. So just take whatever you weigh, divide by 6, and that is going to be your lunar weight. So if you weigh 120 pounds on the Earth, you weigh 20 pounds on the Moon. If you weigh 240 pounds on the Earth, you would weigh a whole whopping 40 pounds on the Moon because weight changes when gravity changes. All right, that will do for this time. See you later. Bye.